In this video, we're going to look at one practice exam question for each of the five required practicals for physics paper one. So that would be density, and we've got resistance of a wire, current voltage characteristics, specific heat capacity, and insulation if you're doing separate science. For each one, reminder, use bullet points. Make sure you name any equipment you're using and what you're using to measure. And make sure you mention specific amounts and talk about variables where you can. To work out the density of an object, you need to know the equation for density. So density equals mass divided by volume is absolutely essential to this practical. Um, so for our rock here, it's an irregular shape, so that's going to be really important because how we measure the volume of it is going to be different than if it was a cuboid or something similar. So to find the mass out, um, it's very simple, we use scales. So let's start writing our method, which we could do in bullet points again um, to find out. So we can say measure the mass of the rock um, by putting it on some scales or by putting it um, on, we could say, a balance. Next thing is the volume. Now this is gonna take up most of our method because um, it's gonna be a little bit trickier to do. Now, I'm gonna draw a diagram here, which you can join an answer, not gonna necessarily get you marks, um, but you might have used something like this before. You can use what's called a Eureka can um, or a displacement can. Um, and what you'll do is you'll put water in it up to the spout and then you'll place the rock in, usually a piece of string to stop it um, dropping in. Now, after you do that, you'll notice water flows up out of the spout, so you need to have something to catch it. So the thing we have to catch it is we put a measuring cylinder underneath it so that we can measure the volume easily. Okay, so let me translate that into a few steps um, for us to use in this practical. So uh, stage number two, we'd say um, place a measuring cylinder under the spout of a Eureka can. Eureka can. Then you're going to say lower um, the rock uh, into the water or until it's submerged. You're going to measure the volume displaced or the volume that overflows out of the spout um, using our measuring cylinder. Okay, and then the last step is to say uh, how we find the density. We've written down already, let's just do it again. So find the density by using the equation, which should be given to you in your equation sheet, so that shouldn't be a problem to remember. Um, and it's just mass, which we found earlier, divided by volume, and that'll be absolutely perfect for six marks. Um, so it tells us the density of the rock is this value here, 2.55, and we've got plus or minus 0.10. So that means the maximum it could be is added uh, 0.10 to that. So that means that's 2.65, and the minimum it could be is uh, minus 0.1 from that, uh, which is 2.45. Now, then we've got a table of values, which the densities are given of these different materials. Uh, which one could it be um, out of the, all these different options? So you've got to kind of go through each one in turn, figure out which one could it be, um, and it's going to be this one here, because the highest that could be is 2.5, which is within our range, um, and the lowest um, it could be, sorry, the highest this one could be um, is, again, 2.5. So it's going to be uh, chalk or flint are the two we're looking for there. Now, over the page, um, we've got a really standard question, um, which is about how do we use repeat measurements? So it says, explain why taking measurements more than once may improve the accuracy. Now, this comes up a lot. This is probably more important than learning the practical. Um, taking repeat measurements allows us to, uh, we can discard um, or remove um, any anomalies from our results. Anomalies um, when calculating a mean. So the whole point is repeats allow you to find anomalies um, and then when you calculate a mean you don't have to use them so they don't affect your overall results. So that's two separate marks for those two points there. As you can tell from the circuit diagram, this electricity required practical question is going to ask us to fill in a couple of gaps. So it's about how resistance of a wire varies with length, more on that later. First of all is to look at where we place our ammeter and our voltmeter. Now our ammeter can go anywhere in the circuit because ammeters um, measure current and current is the same anywhere in this circuit. And the voltmeter, as simple as V, but voltmeters have to be connected in parallel. So that goes across the wire because um, that's what we're investigating. Next up we've got the dreaded six marker. It says Describe how the student would obtain the, obtain the data needed for the investigation. We need to include uh, a risk assessment for one hazard in the investigation. So what we're investigating from the previous page is how length affects resistance. I've put the circuit diagram here to help us out. Now, it's absolutely fine to use bullet points. I'd encourage it for practical questions. So let's use that method. So first of all, what are we going to use these pieces of equipment for? So V is a voltmeter, A is an ammeter. We're going to measure or record... Um, using the voltmeter and ammeter, the voltage or PD um, and the current. So record with PD using the voltmeter 
and the current using the ammeter. Next thing we're going to do is look at, well, how does that help us find out the resistance? Well, there is an equation which you don't need to remember anymore, um, but you can say calculate, work out the resistance um, by using the equation or by using this bit here, by using resistance equals PD or voltage divided by current. For the next bit of the question, we're going to go back to what the investigation is about. How does length affect resistance? So we have to change the length to be able to investigate that. So we're going to change the length um, by um, increasing distance between uh, now it could be crocodile clips or leads um, I'm just gonna say leads here it doesn't actually mention in the question um, so it's good crocodile clips here it doesn't really matter and I'm gonna say by let's say 10 centimeters okay then what we do uh, is repeat um, steps one and two so to measure the resistance each time and do this for several let's say uh, eight different lengths okay now you might be wondering uh, what this thing is here uh, in my investigation so this is a variable resistor um, now the whole point of this is to change the resistance in the circuit and that's where one of our risk assessments could come in so we could say use the variable resistor and we're going to use it to keep the current low okay so use variable resistor to keep um, the current low I'm going to run out a little bit of room here so keep the current low um, to prevent it uh, getting hot Okay, so the, how it gets hot um, is the hazard in the investigation and the risk assessment is, well, what am I going to do about it? I'm going to keep the current nice and low. Okay, just to finish off this question, we've got a couple of multiple choice questions. Um, this one asks, why would switching off the circuit between readings have improved the accuracy of the investigation? Um, and the idea is if you have switched off the reading, uh, the circuit between readings, the temperature doesn't change. We kind of mentioned that a little bit already. And over here, we've got this um, piece of equipment called a jockey instead of a crocodile clip. Um, how, what effect would it have? Um, it improves the resolution um, because you can see the jockey has got like a smaller tip. Um, so it improves the resolution there. And also improves the accuracy, makes the accuracy higher. This question is asking us about how the current in a filament lamp varies with a potential difference. Now you could be asked this question about not just a lamp, you could be asked about a resistor um, or fixed resistor or a diode. Okay, this question is about a lamp and handily it gives us the graph. That should start jogging your memory into what practical this is all about. Now your first clue is that we've got current and we've got potential difference. So in our diagram we are gonna have to draw, we do need to draw somewhere, a voltmeter and an ammeter. Okay, and obviously it's a bulb or a lamp, so we need to draw that symbol as well. So how do these things come together? Well, first things first, obviously we need a power supply to the circuit, so we need a cell or something similar. We are going to need a lamp, um, and I'm going to draw in an ammeter uh, on this side of the circuit, uh, around about here. The ammeter can be anywhere. Okay, um, next thing is the voltmeter. Now, the voltmeter needs to go across either side of the lamp. That's because it measures the potential difference. So, the energy the electrons have before versus after the lamp. And the last thing is the bit that people will often forget, and I'll come on to why we use this later. This component here is a variable resistor. Okay, you need to have one of those in the circuit to be able to change the current to different levels. Um, so, couple of marks available for that circuit diagram. Let's move on to the method and let's figure out how we can get full marks on this question. Now you don't need to say things like set up the circuit as shown. Um, it's not a bad thing to say but just waste space doesn't get any marks. So just dive straight in and say what are we measuring. So we're going to talk about what we're using the ammeter and the voltmeter for. So we're going to measure the current using the ammeter and the, you're going to measure the PD or the voltage um, using the voltmeter. That gets us a nice easy mark straight away, just for proving to the examiner you know what you're talking about. Okay, now that's great. However, if you look at the graph, it's not just one value they've got. Each cross represents a different value. So how are we going to get those values? Well, that's what the variable resistor does. Okay, a variable resistor allows us to alter um, the current. It affects the resistance, but in turn then affects the current. So you're going to change the... Um, resistance in the circuit using the variable resistor and then you're going to do basically step one again okay so change the resistance in the circuit um, and then measure uh, the new current and pd um, and repeat for um, one volt two volts three volts four volts five volts and six volts okay so between one volt and six volts Okay, now you might notice that this diagram is a bit of a funny one, this graph, sorry, not diagram, because uh, it's got some negative values. So how do we get negative values in a circuit? That's all to do with this cell. You've currently got the positive end there and the negative end there. If I was to reverse them, the readings on the voltmeter and the ammeter are negative. 
Okay, so then you could say reverse or flip the connections on the cell and take current and PD readings um, again. And why are you doing that? To obtain or to get negative, negative values. Okay, um, now as for the rest of the circuit, it doesn't ask us for anything else, so that's absolutely fine, perfect six marker right there. Now, this question that came up on the combined science paper in 2022 as one of the harder required practical questions you can get, because it's very unlikely you've done this practical in the classroom. You've done a version of it, uh, but this question to ask you to find the specific heat capacity of vegetable oil and normally in classrooms you do it with metal but if you keep your wits about you and you make sure you're mentioning all the equipment then you should be able to get our six marks out of six for this method so let's talk about what each thing's for now thermometers easy that's to measure temperature top pan balance we use that to measure mass um, we've got a beaker which we're going to talk about in a second what we're going to put in there uh, we've got a heater and a joule meter now as you might be able to guess a joule meter measures energy so we need to keep talking about those three things regularly and we should be doing fine now to help us out with this question we've also got an equation on our equation sheet that's got specific capacity in it so i'm going to write it down at the start and um, it says energy equals mass times by specific heat capacity so that's this thing here times by temperature change which we use this funny symbol for um, but it just means change in temperature so let's start writing our method we can use bullet points to make our lives easier now you do get marks here for talking about how you set this all up because it doesn't mention that it just gives you the equipment so first things first we're going to pour the oil into the beaker measure um, the mass and we're going to using uh, the top pan balance. Now you don't necessarily have to mention this next bit if you don't want to, um, but to measure the top pan balance, obviously you're then going to measure the mass of the beaker as well, even though it's filled up with oil. Um, so you could say something like subtract um, you know, the mass of the beaker so that you've just got the mass of the oil. Okay, then we're going to place the beaker, once you've measured the mass, uh, beaker um, on the heater, and we're going to um, use the thermometer to measure uh, temperature. So next we're going to turn the heater on um, and then we're going to leave um, for, I'm going to say, a certain amount of time, doesn't really matter, I'm going to say 10 um, minutes. Okay, so many hours time. Now, after that time, um, you're then going to find, um, measure the new temperature uh, using thermometer on the thermometer and you're also going to measure how much energy has passed through the electric heater. Okay, so measure new temperature on the thermometer, uh, measure the energy um, transferred to the heater, or just energy transferred using the joule meter. What we're then going to do um, is to subtract, uh, so find the change in temperature, um, which equals the final uh, minus the initial readings, and then uh, find the specific heat capacity uh, using, and I'm going to rearrange the equation, or you wouldn't necessarily need to, but you need to show your understanding that that's what you need to use. Um, so rearranging the equation for specific heat capacity, I need to get mass and temperature onto the other side, so I've got to divide them. So energy divide by mass times by temperature change. And that's all you need to do for that question. You mentioned every piece of equipment, you mentioned the equation, job done. Just to finish off this uh, practical based question, uh, we are asked to give a risk. Okay, so risk, um, if you don't know, you've got hazards, um, you've got risks, um, and then you've got precautions. Okay, so generally speaking, uh, hazards are things that, uh, with the thing that could, um, can be dangerous, so the dangerous thing. Uh, risks are what could happen. Um, and then the precaution is what you could do about it. Okay, so what could happen is the risk um, and what um, like precautions can you make, what uh, to do about it. Um, now, this only talks about the risk, so it doesn't talk about the hazard, um, but what to do about it, you don't need to mention. The risk it should be kind of obvious if you're heating hot oil, um, the risk is that the hot oil um, could burn you. And I'd be specific here, I'd say burn uh, your skin or something like that. Don't need to write anything more than that, it's just one. This question about insulation might seem easy, but it's harder than you think to get six marks on this one. So let's have a look at what we've got. Uh, a student investigates the insulating properties of newspaper. They use this equipment here. We've got some hot water, a metal can, layers of newspaper, and a digital thermometer. And it shows you their results in the graph down here, where we've got the number of new layers of newspaper changing on the x-axis and the temperature decrease of the water after five minutes. The question is very simple. Describe a method the student could use to obtain these results. Um, now it 
tells us the number of layers of newspaper used. It starts off at zero, and if you look this way, it then goes to eight, then it goes to 16, then it goes to uh, 24, um, and then we finish off on 32. And on the y-axis, it says the temperature decrease in the water after five minutes. So we don't need to wait longer than five minutes, but we do need to measure the temperature decrease. So how you'd start off is a little bit like this. So use a kettle um, or something similar uh, to heat water. Um, pour um, a certain amount, it doesn't matter how much, um, it doesn't say how much, pour into um, the metal can. Now I'm going to say metal can, and I'm going to say initially I'm going to start off with one with zero newspaper around it, because that's just easiest to start off with. Okay, so I'm going to say with no newspaper. Then we're going to say, we're going to place the thermometer inside, digital thermometer, uh, so place the thermometer inside and if you look at the y-axis on the graph as it says it says a temperature decrease of the water after five minutes so one thing that's not in here is a stop clock to be able to measure that with okay so you are expected to know that uh, because it talks about time so how do we do it well so record temperature then you're going to start the stop clock then you're going to say after five minutes because it says five minutes here record the new temperature uh, and then subtract the two values because you're finding the temperature decrease so subtract the two um, values to find the decrease. So what we've done there is we've done a perfect method just for one can. So that's for our first point on the graph up here. We need to then talk about the rest of them. So we're going to say something like repeat steps uh, one, two, four. Um, with And let's look at the graph again. We've got eight layers of newspaper. Then we've got 16, 24, etc. So with eight layer eight, then... Um, 16, 24, 32 uh, layers of newspaper. And this question is only about how do you get the data. It doesn't tell you anything about what you do with the results. We've got the results already. Um, so that's all we need to mention. Now, something this question might look for um, is some control variables. OK, so uh, we're changing the number of layers of newspaper. We're measuring the temperature decrease. Um, you could say make sure keep the volume of water um, the same each time. So... Um, you might want to use a measuring cylinder for that, um, or a beaker would be fine here, um, but a measuring cylinder is better. Okay, So that would be a really good thing to enter in. You could put that at the start of the method if you wanted to um, as well.